superiority form of a person's life, written by another person. One autobiography of the story of the superiority form of a person's life, written by the same person. So what is the distinction between autobiography and biography? What will you find in one and you won't find in the other? Correct. In autobiography, you will not find the death of the writer. Because the writer is still alive writing about himself. But the biography, definitely, the person writing is different from whom he's writing about. So you would see the part of where the person written about is dead. How the death occurred. Is that clear? What's a memoir? M-E-M-O-I-R. What's a memoir? I'm trying to bring out your mind, bring your mind into some literary terms. What's a memoir? Yeah. I'm not too sure. But you can say a Yes, you've already said you're not sure, but you are right. You're actually right. So memoir is a story of a person's life or experience at a particular point in time. There was an experience you had somewhere, sometime, and then you want to write out the story and the experiences. We had one written by Wale Shoenka, Professor Wale Shoenka, his experience sometime, somewhere. Okay, so that's a memoir. A memoir could tell you about the experience of a person who went to visit the sea, went to the sea and spent about one week in the water. Inside the water. Yeah, we have them around the uh, monitor. I've heard stories about some people in Nzam. Nzam is a place in Ambra State, Annam, who would dive into the water and spend about a week. You won't see them in the water. Okay? But those things may be myth. No, they don't see it's river. You have the Niger River, River Niger, not sea. The only sea we have, I think, is cut across the side of Lagos. We have one in Calabar. I don't know if that's the same one that went through Akwa Ibom. And that's the Atlantic Sea, through which you get the boats and the ships sail through to other continents. But then this experience, according to the belief of the people of Nzam, is that there is a link between the people of Nzam and the beans in the water. Yes. And that's why every Nzam person knows how to swim and will not die in the water. No matter what happens, they don't die in the water. There's always a force or a power that rescues them because there's actually a covenant they have with water. Some of these things you may not know them because most of you were born in a town and a city and grew up in a city. So you should have some knowledge of this thing by visiting your place. I advise you most times I ask you questions, visit your place. There are some mysterious things you need to know about your place. Africa is rich in culture. We're rich in meat. We're rich in tradition. There are things you would hear that would surprise you. I remember my mother was telling us a story about a neighbor of hers in the village, a relative, they live close, and another relative of hers who was in a boat. And she was sailing, or they were being sailed to the village. They used a big river. At a point, they got to the middle of the river, and there was a, sh a boat, um, is it boat wreck now? The boat capsided. And so many of them fell into the water. This relative of hers could not swim. So what was she doing? She kept shouting and screaming the name of another relative of theirs, I am dying. Let me assume the name is called um, Banam. Just give me a name. Banam. Banam, I'm dying. Please help me. You can't leave me die this way. I'm your sister. I can't just die like this. Help me out. No, the person was not with her. I will tell you what happened after that shout. Hippopotamus came. Yes. Carried this woman from its back. Move this woman from the middle of the river to the shore. No. These things, these things, you say what? They don't swim. Hippopotamus. Hippopotamus. I don't know. It's what I was told. I'm telling you. They have to do water. So it carried this particular woman took her to the shore 
and then she walked to the village. When she got to the village, the next morning she prepared on rye plantain, fish roasted, and some palm oil, and took it to the woman beside her. And she said, thank you, ma, for rescuing me yesterday evening. I would have been dead. And he said, why are we sisters? I should do that any time. <laughs> now, that's the truth. That's a tr These things are real. You will not know them. You know why you wouldn't know them? The average white man takes you from this belief away. Africa is known today with this. Yes. There are people from my mother's place that are animals at the same time as humans. So you are going to the forest to kill. Be careful the animal you kill. Some of them are lions. Some are elephants. Some are big pythons. Are we communicating? Now, it's a natural stuff they had with their great-grandparents and all that. And that's why sometimes in your homes, in your house, there are some rats you see. They are not ordinary rats. I would notice it before. You talk to them, they listen to you. I remember there was one I saw in Lagos. I was in motion then. A big rat. I'd never seen a rat as big as that. And immediately I sighted the rats. I was shivering. I had these goose pimples in my body. I knew this was not ordinary. Two days later, I started the same rat again, but I had to summon courage, so I had to speak to the rat. I said, yes, I had to. I said, listen to me. I'm not scared of you. That I'm not taking action doesn't mean I'm scared of you. I give you the last warning. Yes. If I see you around this kitchen again tomorrow, I'm going to kill you. It's a promise. That's what I'm saying. Believe you me, that was the last time the rat ever came to that environment. Hello. This thing sounds strange to many of you. But, huh? Very strange. It's not strange. Some of your parents discussed this with them. Your grandparents, they will tell you it's true. What is the reason you think the people of Nteje don't kill snakes like that? That's what I'm saying. Sometimes it could even be believed that your ancestors were snakes. They didn't die. Yes. There's a place around they call Ide Mili. The Ide Mili area, you don't kill snakes there. That's it. You hail the snake when it comes, and the snake do not hurt the people. Snakes sleep on the same bed with the humans. Yes. So sometimes when you find a snake, all you have to do is speak to the snake to please leave the environment. If it doesn't leave the environment, then you call the priest who carries the snake with respect out of that place. This happened in Nigeria. I'm not saying outside Nigeria. Now there's a place in Oka, you don't kill monkeys. Yes. Are you sure of that? You're saying yes. Now, are you sh you're sure of it, right? You don't kill. Am I communicating? These things are real. Thank God that some of you from this area you confirm what I'm saying. Okay? So there are places. There are places. There are some places once you see elephants, you bow before the elephants. You don't touch it. Like you have in India. Yeah, there's a place in India you don't kill elephants. You don't hurt elephants. They come to rescue people. These things exist in literature in English. They open your eyes to understand the realities of life. Stop accepting foreign beliefs, thereby ignoring what exists even around your own place. The white men come here to learn. I am from Cross River State. There's a place in Cross River State that the language of the women differ from the language of the men. They don't speak the same language, but they live in the same area. They have a different language by the ladies or the women and a different one by the men in the same place, the same locality in Cross River State. They use the language of the men to communicate to the women and the women respond in the language of the women. They understand, they know, but they are not allowed to speak the language of the men. Yes. Am I communicating? These things exist. A lot of things exist. There's a place between Nigeria and Cameroon on mountains where you see go see people who are naked. They don't wear clothes. You say yes. You've heard of it before. Good. 
I'm really trying to confirm when I say he said yes. Because some people believe that this man is just forming stories. I beg, just to make the class look lively. Very, very what? Simply say it sounds fake. Don't say it's fake. Make your own research and find out. It's real. It's real. Do you know there are some places that pythons do not kill? They don't kill. They help the indigenous. They understand their languages. There are things you say. There are things you say to those animals. They know you're referring to them. They come to help you out. Especially sea animals. From the water. They help you out. Hello, are we communicating? Yes, sir. But you know you are in cities, you are in town, so most of you may not know some of these things. Go to your villages, ask your grandparents, find out from them, hear from them. Africa is the most blessed continent in the world. Most blessed continent in the world is Africa. Hello. I need to go back to what we have today as our topic. What's that? What did he just show you? What's that? Okay, they stay in water. Okay, you never believe they stay in water? It's not possible, okay. All right, don't worry. Just pay a visit one day to Cross River State, Akwa Ibom. And this ones, I'm sure of them. What am I even saying? In all the states in Nigeria, even Abuja, they have their own beliefs too. In Abuja here. Yeah, the, is it what? Dagi people. There are beliefs they also have here. Nasarawa here, the same thing. But you see more of these things in places that are yet to be developed much. Anambra. I told you about this one. I had an experience in Nteje. I was there. That's where Pisedoche is from. Anambra State. Ide Mili is not so far from Onicha. I've been on Onicha for 13 years in Onicha. And I love to go make explore. I explore things. I go around. I can't stay in a place for a long time. I move around to learn things in the environment because of things like this. So when I'm talking, I talk with confidence and assurance. Go to Cross River State, go and find out what I've just told you. If it's a lie. How many are from Cross River State here? Oh, good job, girl. Where is she? Okay. I wanted her to confirm some of the things I just said now. Let's just leave that alone. Let's go into our topic. May I have. Where is the book, Rita? Okay. Our topic today is going to look different. Though similar to the first one we had was black woman, naked woman, yeah. the scare state about the woman and the African continent, admiration of a woman, the beauty of a woman, the beauty of Africa, a good thing about it. They we went to the leader and the lead. In the leader and the lead, we realized that the African people are not content with the kind of leaders they have. They expect a perfect leader. And then we realize that you cannot have a perfect leader. The only way you can have a near perfection leader is when the lead put themselves in the shoe of the leaders. And the leaders put themselves in the shoe of the lead. Then you can have a near perfection leader. Are we communicating? Until you try to put yourself in the shoe of your father. Who provide the needs of the house your need your mother's need your siblings need you will not see reasons to understand him are we communicating yeah. from the age of two months or two days to about the age of 12 13 no child wants to listen to reason why he is not eating am i communicating you don't come and say ah things are not expensive oh. So from today, you won't take breakfast again. You can't tell that to a six-year-old child. Is that true? Yeah. You can't. The child goes and say, okay, mommy, I've heard you. Whatever thing you have said. Once it's 9 a.m., where's my breakfast? <laughs> it will give you a grace of one hour. 10 a.m., breakfast, and it's not there. The look changes. Yeah. Any other thing you say you should do, he won't listen to you. Until that breakfast comes. <laughs> if God helps you, that he forgot and he went to play to have his nice time and he comes back at 12. He has not taken his breakfast, he will take the two. Yeah. My breakfast, then after one hour, my lunch. Are we communicating? Yeah. How you provide that, he doesn't care. But what you get from the age of 18, 20, 25, 
It's expected that you understand. A call you and they say, come, no breakfast. We are managing. It's okay, I understand. Okay, maybe what we should just do is that the breakfast I would have taken, just give it to me at 11.30 a.m. or 12 noon. Let me balance both. So, all right. At your discretion. Am I communicating? Now, maturity is in the ability of putting yourself in the shoe of the leader or of the others. That's maturity. People who nag and complain are immature. Yes. yes. You nag too much, you complain too much, you are immature. You see a guy you love, you want to marry the guy as a young lady, and you notice that he complains too much, start running away. You see a girl, she looks beautiful, yes, thank God, but she nags, she complains, talks about needs. Start placing distance from her life, and she will frustrate you to death. Are we communicating? So from that poem, we could understand that a leader should put himself in the shoe of the lead and say, how do people eat? How do they cope? How do they pay their house rent? What's going on with them? What if I were in their shoe? Would I have a way out? When you start reasoning like that as a leader, you will lead well. <laughs> Someone asked that question last night when I was listening to the radio of complaints. And they said, does Tinubu listen to all these things, complaints on radio at all? And I said, yes, once in a while he does. He does. And the person said, am I sure? I said, yes. I said, but you know, one thing about these leaders is when they listen, they still want somebody to interpret what they heard. No, they probably like, this person is complaining, food is expensive. Then he will not call the minister of um, probably the, in the food store and say, people are complaining food expenses. He said, don't mind them. No Nigerians, we will be satisfied. We will give them more. But is it not actually expensive? They gave example the last time. Said, yeah, it was because of that um, tax we collected. I know we have to use it to develop, to develop another land. That place. Yeah, are you sure? Okay, it's all right. And then he removes his mind. Are we communicated? So most times it may not be the challenge from the real president. But the problem is around the people around the president. We know he cannot hear everything. He is always busy. If I were a president, I would devote just probably one hour to news. Yes, one hour in a day to news. I'll be too busy. Doing what? Monitoring the assignment I gave you. As a minister of finance, I gave you an assignment to carry out. I won't just trust you 100%. I'm going to monitor. Have you done it very well? Okay, this is okay. What about the Minister of Agriculture? What happened? Why am I going to sleep on my bed for three hours? Do you what? Exactly. You should follow up everything. Because once anything goes negative, I'm the one head responsible. Now the feedback will be when I will spend one hour to a year from the people of Nigeria. Anyway, maybe because I'm speaking because I'm in the position of the lead. And I've been in that position for a long time. Once you put to be a lead also, do you also lead? I think we need to pray against such spirit. We'll, we'll come to the, I think we'll see more of this in this poem. That's why we have this poetry there. And then we'll actually see the way out of these challenges. What do we do? Because you, as a student of literature, you have a role to play. I hope you know. Yes. Who knows about Chimamanda Adichie? Yes. Yes. Yeah, she's just a major person now in our generation who is talking as a literary scholar. We need new people to rise, write create poetry make some write-ups and fight against evil governance not just bad governance because for me this what is happening in nigeria is not just bad it's evil are we communicating maybe i am being subjective but then that's where i see it people are dying out of hunger it had never happened in the history of this country even if there was nothing in nigeria we would have food you know these days people pray that visitors don't visit them again <laughs> that's the prayers now i don't want to have visitor in my house because what's in my house i've been budgeted for those mouths no more additional mouths but that's not our culture in the african culture when you are eating give that food to your neighbor even if he has give him it's our culture how many of you experienced that Christmas regime period? Yeah. Those Christmas days. You leave your house. You don't eat Christmas food in your parents' house. You live in your uncle and auntie's houses. 
Sometimes you come back and not even hungry again. Are we communicating? We had a communal life. But these days, even the last Christmas, some people didn't go out. Yes, some didn't go. Many didn't go out. In fact, more than 50% did not travel. They didn't travel, except for our Easterners who would always want to travel for the communal purpose. Even at that, not every one of them were traveling that traveled. Things are happening. God help Nigeria. Let's go. The green lands of Africa. In the tearless woes of ancient and modern slave. In the degrading sweats of impure dance, grieved. First, what is called grief? Someone is in grief when he has a feeling of serious sorrows. You are in grief when you have a feeling of serious sorrows. That means you're not just sorrowful. The sorrow is at its highest peak. Then you are in grief. And that's what we see here. The grief land of Africa. That means Africa is in a serious sorrows. Trouble. What led to it? Why is Africa in grief? Two kinds of grief. Two reasons for the grief. The first one is said is called the ancient and modern slavery. Ancient slavery was a period when the Europeans, the foreigners outside this continent, came into African continent. To buy humans. They would come with the use of trade by butter. Present something that your leaders had not seen before. Mirror. Spoon. Pictures. Some funny things. For every one mirror, you produce 200 human beings. So thousands of humans were being shipped out of the continent. And if anyone was to be stubborn, they would beat them not with wood, not with stick, but with rod. Rod and chains. The love that existed in the continents turned to sorrow. The father will leave the family, the wife and the children that will say, I'm going to the farm to go get food produce, food produce so we could eat for days. Getting there, he is caught, tied in leg and made his sleeve, taken out of the land. And then you realize that the wife is asking, where is our father? He went to the farm, went to the farm, no dead body, nothing. And those days, one dead body is not seen, they assume the person is not dead. So the son start looking for dead body in the water, on the land, and everywhere they will not find. Now the dead body of your loved one is not seen. He himself is not seen, and it's just gone like that. There's what we call imaginative sorrows. And there's a sorrow that comes based on what you see. The most painful one is the one you imagine, not the one you see. Are we communicating? Now you see somebody you love so much kicks the bucket and dies. What do you do? You cry, you mourn for the period and all that. Sometimes how he died would also make you cry. But the one that pains most is he is killed, but you can't see the body. You're only trying to imagine how he was killed. The pain keeps haunting you every day you think about him. Are we communicating? Imagine you went to the forest and then one python came and you didn't see the python in time and a good friend of yours, a relative, you're both farming and a python had to engulf him. And as he was trying to take him, your friend, you were struggling to kill the python, but no, yeah. swallowed your friend in your presence. That memory will not leave that person till death. It will haunt you. You'll be worried. Every time you sleep, you want to rest, you can't rest. Because you saw when a very close friend of yours was being engulfed by a snake. Are we communicating? Just yesterday or two days ago, something happened horribly in Abafemi Wolo University. The lion that killed the man, the keeper. Who heard the story? Yeah, a lion. 
No, you're not escaped. The man was just going to feed the lion from the story we heard. And then the lion attacks him. The lion was hungry, was left without food, I guess, for days. It's in a zoo. Oh, yeah, a zookeeper. For days. So finally he brought the meat. So the lion did not just eat the meat, attacked him and killed him. And then when they heard a noise, people came around, the Yoruba guys there were very angry. Kill the bastard! Shoot the bastard! They brought out the gun, targeted the lion and shot the lion. The lion didn't die immediately. So they were trying to shoot the second time. The coordinator said, no, they should shoot again. He shot the first one. It's okay. But I think the lion was seriously and badly injured. Why would you have money to go and feed lion when you have not even eaten your food? <laughs> Wait, what is happening in Nigeria today? And do you even know the cost of a goat? If a lion has to be fed with a goat, after today, at least less than two, three days, you will feed the lion again. The smallest goat is not less than 40,000 error. Not less than. I said not less than. It should be more than. Why are you training lion? For you to come and see and know what they call lion. It's in zoo. They also used to make money with it. When you come, you pay for sightseeing and then they make their own money too. Yeah, I've had the opportunity of seeing lion. That's where I saw lion physically. I told you the story, right? University of Ibadan. UI is Zoological Garden. That was the first time I had an encounter with a lion. Mm. A lion is big. The weight of a lion is 150 kg. Yes. You know, no, that's that's an average lion. And then that tells you, you know the bag of rice. A bag of rice is 50 kg. So imagine you're carrying three of it. That's the weight of a lion that is not to bite you, just to follow your body. <laughs> uh, the spinal cord will break. Now, imagine if the lion has to bring out its claws and then pounds on you with that force. How would you be alive to tell the stories? <laughs> so I saw this lion. Lion doesn't look that very big. It's not bigger than this table on the ground. It's not. Maybe the highest of it is this height. But my dear, it's heavier than, than some big rams. Heavier than all the rams. The weight should be equated with that of a cow or thereabouts. But it's like that. And you see, when it moves, you know there's something moving. It is never scared. When I say never scared, my encounter with the lion made me respect the animal. What was my experience there? There was this net that separated the lion from me. The lion was in the net. I was by this way. I had read from the Bible that you should be bold as a lion. I said, this lion, you go fear me. <laughs> so what did I do? You know those days when you see a dog and you do, <laughs> the dog will make some shit backward and run. I expected that from the lion. <laughs> <laughs> the lion didn't make any move. Okay. The ears were down. It was concentrating on the prey it was eating. <laughs> didn't this animal hear me shout? I said, no, if I could shout that way, I didn't make any move. I don't need to stamp my feet on the ground. I will only end up hurting myself. It won't do anything. So I went to look for a stone. I ensured the stone was heavier. At least the stone was about seven or eight of this size. I threw it across the net. It hits the lion. When it touched the lion, you know when dogs want to bark? They don't bark. The first they do is, mm. they do, mm. Lion only did, he did not roar. I ran. Yes, I ran. I ran and the keepers of the zoo came out. Because the noise that got everywhere in the zoo. Everywhere in the zoo. People came out, what is happening? What is happening? What is happening? I was already close to the gates after the place. I couldn't say what happened. But what I was doing was when I had, oh, in the course of running, I was looking at the back. So, in case it's coming after me. So, while watching the lion at the back, what the lion did was stood up from that position, majestically moved away. You see, majestically moved away to another position and sat again to continue eating. Then I understood be bold as a lion. It is never scared 
of anything and anyone fearless there are certain things we need to experience as humans so that when it comes to writing coming to express our views about things we know how to present them and communicate the message to people now slavery in africa started over 400 years ago with the whites who came in here to present few objects took good numbers of humans and made them slaves to produce things in their own land what were the blacks doing in europe most of them will be taken to plantation they will plant things for them they only eat to live they don't live to eat so they give them the food that can make them be alive not the food that will make them be filled so even if that food is going to be something they share between them and their dogs they do that and they were beaten mercilessly injured some of them died along the way because of the suffering the beating and without food they fall in the forest dead bodies were so much if today we're made to go to some places through the road to the other continents even by the water the shore you see some bones around the forest try to get the laboratory to go and check their black bones if you i believe i've seen some of the movies i'm seeing some of these things based on movies i have seen to display this there is one they call um kutakinte yeah that's a native name kutakinte that's the name of that african that was sold as a slave his name was called um his other name was called um zetabi or rabbi there's a name it was given his real name in as an african is kutakinte when he got there, they changed his name. The white man gave him another name over there. But he kept insisting that his name is Kutakinte. You know? You see what he went through. At the point, they had to cut off his toes. Because he was asked to do something that he refused to do. They cut off his toes. You know? They suffered a lot. Once a woman was seen pregnant, they saw this one is useless. They would just shoot the person or throw the person into the forest. You can't go with us. You have to die here. So slavery then was complete slavery. The black man, the African, was under 100% control of the whites, of the Europeans. They were using us to develop their land. They were using us to gain a lot of things to themselves and wealth. Of course, you had no right to wear what the white man was wearing. Except you had to dispose clothes, like rags, that you wear those ones. You're not even allowed to stay in the same compound with a white man. You stay in the forest. And then they rejected robbers and criminals and men to supervise you, the black, in that plantation, in that forest where you are kept. Except the cleanest, the most intelligent, wisest, and who sees favor by miracle in the side of a white man could be taken to go and become a house help <laughs> yes to be a house help and when they are there as house help they have no idea you don't you don't have an idea a baby child the child of the white man can come and slap you you have to smile after the slap yes there won't be a skin to skin contact of anything I don't know how to explain this, but I think you should go and see these movies. Sometimes go on the internet, download slavery in Africa. Experience of slavery of Africans and the whites. You understand this more. I don't know how to exaggerate, and I don't know how to explain exactly how it is. But sincerely, slavery in Africa 400 years ago was the worst experience an African faced. How many of you have been to Badagri, Lagos, the slave village? Now, have you been there before? Now, if you get there, they will show you the chain they use in tying the legs. Very heavy chain. She has seen one. Very heavy. With the weight of the chain, you can't move easily. They tie the legs, tie the hands. It's from that badagri, that site. They force them into the ship. They force the blacks into the ship and sell them out. They pass through that beach and they go to another continent. When you are in the ship and you are unable to have enough strength to do what they ask you to do, they throw the person into the sea. You are gone. 
any person that has a skin color black outside Nigeria, outside Africa, came from Africa. Ugly as she may look, they will still sleep with her. And then they still have children. That was how they began to mix up. People like Nelson Mandela was a black. Is Nelson Mandela? Um, Michael Jackson. Chum -chum. Yes, the roots was traced to come from Africa. And that was why when they saw the evidences, many of them were now speaking for Africa. Speaking for Africa. So there is no black man under this planet Earth, outside Africa, that did not originate from Africa. But they are now in all the countries because of the slavery of about 500 years ago, 600 years ago, the suffering, the torture, and all that. Now, they now mention that one called modern. That one is called Asian slavery. There's that one called modern slavery. The modern slavery is talking about colonialism. Are we communicating? Colonialism. According to government, the colonial masters came adopting two principles. Principle of association and principle of assimilation. The French prefer the assimilation. The Britons association in angola they said the ass was not in this way they even fought war angola is an african country they had to fight war for them to gain their own freedom which means they killed many of the angolans and the question is what are they looking for even the modern slavery they left their place to come here and look for humans by all means and they send them there to become slaves or use them indirectly to fulfill their own purpose. According to me, analyzing this poetry, the modern slavery is beyond colonialism. Even right now, we are experiencing modern slavery. It is that modern slavery that will make somebody say, I want to japa. <laughs> the act of japaing is the spirit of modern slavery. Yes. If not, what are you going to Jakba for? <laughs> to another man's country. And get citizenship. And reject your fatherland. And claim that one. Hello. I will, I will teach you. I will explain it technically. The white man planted in Africa. To sink the thoughts of an average black man. In their own land. So your, your, your view of prosperity. It's never in Africa. Your view of prosperity is where you get to their land. They planted it in your herd. And that's why today, if I, if that prayer now, if I pray for you and I say today, God will bless you, be a great Nigerian. You may not say amen. But if I say tomorrow, you are going to find yourself in America. Amen. <laughs> what prompted all this? It's psychology. You believe America is the best place on earth. You believe that England is the best place on earth? Don't worry. Have I told you about the mystic stone? Yes. I told you about the mystic stone. The mystic stone is found in England. Queen Elizabeth's court. And it's one of the things that makes them enjoy some of the things they're enjoying. And the mystic stone was picked from Africa. But it has some heavy powers. It makes them more wicked and more callous. Let's leave that. You will browse and you will see it in your phone. In the degrading sweat of impure dance, degrading sweat means that that dance means movement. The blacks were maltreated. And in the course of the maltreatment, they were sweating. And this sweat that came out of this suffering degraded them. And that is the aspect of slavery. Slavery is the worst position you can place a human in life. There is no level that goes beyond slavery. The white man those days in school wants to make you believe that slavery is the same as servants. There's a big difference between slavery and servants. A servant has somebody he calls... But a slave person does not call the person master. He calls the person who made him a slave. He's God. 
his Lord and his God. That one decides his destiny. How many of you have seen uh, Gladiator? Yes. Gladiator. Gladiators. Now you realize that they were picking these guys as leaves. Is when they are strong, they have what it is. And that's okay, you come and fight for me. That means there's something they can say about you. If you are not strong, you cannot fight. They kill you and throw you in the forest. That's how slaves were treated. Those were real slaves. A slave has no worth. No worth. If you've seen Gladiator, you understand what I'm saying there. Spartacus. You've seen that also, right? Example of slavery. That's we're given opportunity to enjoy. So even that place they are enjoying because you know Spartacus got to a point where he was not qualified to come into the master's house. An ordinary slave would not leave the dungeon in the cell. That the dungeon, no, no, even that slavery dungeon, uh, slavery cell, they had two places in the cell and under the cell. Do you remember that movie? There was a time Spartacus misbehaved and they took him down under the dungeon. There you will not be protected. You fight till either you die. Right there. But because that man still had a hope, he said, let's watch. From there he won. They brought him out of the dungeon to the cell. Are we communicating? This Spartacus. But please don't watch it when a child is there with you. It's an adult movie. It's a sex movie. Amen. Yeah, they play Spartacus. How many of you have seen it before? You've seen it. Raise your hand. Okay, please. If you don't, you don't. You can't control your emotion. You are moved by what you see. Please don't watch it. Don't worry. You know what I mean by that statement? If you're under your parents and your parents monitor what you watch and they don't trust you. They believe that um, you could be watching blue movies, blue film. Please don't watch it. But if you know that they trust you, they know what you can do. Yes. That you are a good girl, a good boy, and you are not moved by anything you see. You can watch and still control yourself. Because most things there have to do with sex. But watching it, I was not after the sex. I was after the message of the movie. Mm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> So people don't trust me. You're bad people. Now I, I got the message. I must explain the message about the slavery there. So we had different one, different one. So slavery is not something good. We could see what they treated, uh, how they treated the blacks there. The great lands of Africa, in the infamous sensation of the stunning perfumes of the flower, crushed in the forest by the wickedness of iron and fire modernization they grieved lands now this lands you hear talks about every part of africa every country in africa suffered this slavery every part and when you hear about sensation and perfume they're saying even in the attitude even in the behavior i hope you know that christianity was brought to africa as a bait for slavery you were aware about that, right? They just said, for us to use them as slaves, let's come in form of bringing a good religion for them. They now brought Christianity into Africa. We are here for peace. We are to tell you about a God of the heaven and the earth that cares for you, that will turn away your sorrows into joy. So then, like what? And then they began to narrate the story. And because most of us here, we are vulnerable in Africa. So, okay. Oh, that's good. We accept the God of the whites. That's why Christianity was seen as the religion of the whites. Chinu Achebe, in his book, Things Fall Apart, explained that. We had our religion. Everything was cool, well going. The Ahmad Yoha was there to fight our enemies. We had the God of the harvest who would give us plenty of food. And people were scared of doing evil because Ahmad Yoha would come and strike them. They were doing the right thing until... The white came. Things fell apart and the center could no longer hold. May anarchy will now roost upon the world. And you will agree with me. Christianity is that religion that is so patient to accept rubbish. Yeah, let me say say about it. There are three religions in the world. In Nigeria, three religions in Nigeria, major religion. We have a traditional religion. 
we have the Islamic religion, and then we also have the Christian religion. Of these three religions, the one that is very soft at handling things, easy, easy, is Christian. Christianity. Even the Islamic religion is not as soft and tolerant like that, like Christianity. Then, we talk about the traditional religion. I keep asking myself, when you go to the courts to go and swear with the Bible, why don't you swear by the God of Songo or by Songo? You can try it because it will strike you immediately when you misbehave. Instantly. Are we communicating? You go to the courts and you now say, uh, I'm a Christian. All I'm about to say now is true, but nothing but the truth. So help me God. Amen. You drop your Bible. Let the one that serves the traditional powers come and say, I swear by the God of Songo, if I lie, may I not see the noon of tomorrow. You draw the cutlass down. <laughs> so what has happened? The white man came and gave us the simple one. Told us the whole thing and we all accepted. Anyway, I'm speaking now not as a Christian. They came and it brought in Christianity to deceive you. You accepted and you became people that are now speaking, speaking against your own tradition. Many of you, your churches, they will speak against your tradition, isn't it? They will tell you, don't eat with your people in the village. Oh. If your grandfather is not serving God, don't even visit him. There are churches like that. But that's not what Christ preached. There is a book written by that lady I mentioned her name right now. Chimamanda Adichie. Is it popular or popular hibiscus? I think it's popular hibiscus. Popular hibiscus. Where they were warned not to talk to their father because their father was a Catholic. No, their father was um, uh, a traditionalist. Their father said he should not watch. The father was from, the father is from a Catholic church. Told the children not to visit their grandfather, that his own father, because he was an idol worshiper. It's in that book. Now, that is the way your Christianity tells you about things. But that's not what the founder of Christianity said about Christianity. And that is to create enmity among Christianity. If not, why will Nigeria be one of the most populated Christian denominations in the world and still has hatred and wickedness more? And we ask ourselves, are we actually asking ourselves why will Nigeria be the most religious country in Africa but they are suffering more than any country in Africa why because the real message of the religion is not being communicated for example in Islamic religion the prophet do not teach that you should kill anybody in Islamic religion are we communicating? It tells them to teach the word and even help those who don't believe in them. That with it, you may convert their souls and they may not believe in you. But you now see some sects, not all of them, some sects in Islam that believes that the best way is to fight and kill to gather people with them. Likewise in the Christendom, we have some sects that will tell you that if you don't believe in Christianity, you are going to hellfire. fire. Heaven is not your portion. Even the Christianity religion, there are some sects there that believe that the other sects are not making heaven. For example, the Catholics believe that if you're not a Catholic, every other person in the Christianity is going to hell. Yeah, the Catholics believe that. If you come to Pentecostal, Pentecostal will tell you that, Christ, that the Catholics are not Christians. Pentecostal, they, are not, they say they are not Christians. They call them another religion that is not Christianity. That they are worshipping idols, worshipping Mary. You see their view. Did you see their view? That's Pentecostal's view. Now, tell me the point now. That means Christianity in itself too is divided. So what is the essence? Likewise in Islam too, they have different sects too. There are some that believe that you have to cover your head to down. There are some that says that you don't have to cover everything. There are some that believe that don't ever wear trousers. There are some that believe that you can wear your trousers. At first, it's not seductive. 
and they start condemning each other. Some believe that if your own religion, if your own Islam is not from the north, it's from the southwest, you are in the fake parts of Islam. Yes, in Africa. Then you ask me the question, what is the main target of this division? Is to bring a problem among the African continent. Now you now see what I call neocolonialism, modern slavery. How many churches these days will tell the rich among them and say, look at the price of things have gone up. Can we have the rich among you contribute money? Let's help the needy among us to buy rice, to buy food for them in the house. How many churches do it? Instead, you looking for food to eat, they will sit there, you contribute money. Yes. We want to go for evangelism. And if you don't contribute, I'm going to say you are a sinner. You don't believe in God. Hello. Some of you will dislike me after my teaching. That's your problem. I'm saying what I know. The next one, let's go. By the wickedness of iron and fire, modernization, the greed lands. Iron, chain for slavery to maltreat the people of the African continent. The green lands of Africa in the dream soon undone in jingling of jailer's keys and in the stifle's laughter and victorious voice of lament and in the unconscious brilliance of hidden sensation of the grieved lands of Africa. Now, when you hear the expression such as I want to get stifled laughter. How can laughter be stifled? That's a paradoxical expression. You want to laugh, but your laughter was held. That's what they call, that we experience in Nigeria, we call it um, suffering and smiling. Yes. We are smiling. You know, there are many people, I won't even be surprised if we have them here. And they're not even sure of what they are going to eat this afternoon. Yes. But when you see them, they will smile, they will laugh. You think all is well. Yes. It's, it's a good, that's what keeps us going. That's exactly what the poem is saying here. That in the midst of that suffering, of that trouble, of that slavery experience, we still have a hope that things will be better. Things will be what? Better. The same language we used when Jonathan was a president. No, I think it was, not, it was better at that time. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Jonathan's regime, we are like, ha, ah, hmm. Now, wow, things bad though. Hey, can you imagine? Bag of rice, 8,500. They want to kill us in this country. Eh? And then people were not like, don't worry, take it easy. Things will be better things should be fine and now wow things should be better jonathan left buhari came and when buhari came it came twenty thousand. ha they want to kill us don't worry things will be better buhari left bag of rice is now seventy thousand. hey what has happened what's in our answer this will be now the question is are things getting better then that is the spirit of the hope, steeped laughter. Steeped laughter. You're finding yourself steeped in laughter. You can't laugh because there's a pain in you. There's a pain in you. There's a sorrow in you. Hardly will you see parents of these days laugh and smile again. I am not exaggerating. Check your parents very well. If you're living with your aunties, you say what? That's what I'm telling you. Hardly will you see parents in our houses now laugh since early this year till now. <laughs> ah, my dear, that means they are Christians. Their hope is still in God will make it better. That's the reason they still laugh. Everything is, that's what I'm saying now. Everything is better now. Last year, Abby? Last year was 20,000, now 75,000. Everything is better. <laughs> Next year will be 100,000 bag of rice. It will be better. Somebody said, Go for a bid. They said it last year. Hello. The only way, actually, in Africa, the only way we can get ourselves going is that steep laughter. Just laugh. Things are not going well, but we'll keep mourning. 
But that is the only thing that can make you look good. No, what will be the result of fighting and carrying aggression against any human being you see? What will be the result? You only end up hurting yourself. Where is the government for us to go and fight? Or which the government is a human being somewhere? Sincerely, let them cut off my hand. I thought I'd kill that government and my hand is cut off. It's okay. Are we communicating? But what do we do? The only way we literature students, we have a way we do it. We fight. We fight injustice with our pen. We fight injustice with talking. That's why I love the way Nigerians are acting now on social media, Facebook. They'll come, they will speak, they will shout, they will talk, they insult, they express their pain. We love it. That is what you should do. Sit down one place, compose some poetry. A very good friend of mine was trying to present something in a school where she teaches and was asking me to please proofread what she has written concerning when bag of rice was 8,500, people could still afford it, and now it has gone so high to about 70,000 and all that. And I said, proofread, I won't let proofread, I will help you add some on top. <laughs> he said, go ahead. And I added. After we got to a point where we realized that the price of things had gone so high, I now said, even when we fall sick because we couldn't get the good food to eat, we don't have enough pharmacies to give us good drugs. Yes. The drug available has increased. Malaria and typhoid drug from 2.5 have become 20,000. <laughs> yes. Real typhoid medicine now is about 20,000 thereabouts. So pray not to fall sick. And if at the end of the day, you couldn't get the drugs and they said, please, you have taken enough drugs, now go to the hospital. You will go there, you will find doctors. Yes. Many of our doctors have flown out of Africa. They've gone. Some of them are on strike. Now they are managing medical doctors in rich hospitals. I repeat, not in. In rich hospitals, they are managing doctors. Where is doctor? He's coming. Wait for him. Two hours. Where is doctor? He's on his way. Three hours. He has not come. Because the same doctor is going different places to go and manage patients. Where are the others? They've left the country. As I'm talking to you, go to mortuary. No space to keep bodies again. Ah! Oh, but it's true. I'm not exaggerating. The pathway, the pathway you will follow into the mortuary is kept with human bodies. They place human bodies on one another so much. Now, the point is this. Even fresh bodies that are not claimed within six, seven months, they dispose them. Somebody dies, taken to that place, and nobody has come to claim that he's my relative. They carry him. Push him for bush, bury him somewhere. So that the mortuary can have space. Those days I grew up hearing that the cemeteries are quiet. You are quiet as a cemetery. Now, let me be now. When you go to cemetery now, you will hear tears of loved ones crying and shouting. People die every day. Now, you don't be, they don't bury people again on mainland again most times. They bury on another burial ground. On top, have you? God bless you. I'm not exaggerating. Because there's no enough land again. No space. Now, when you bury someone, if you bury somebody there around last year, last two years, you just find a way again and put the other body on the body on the top. That's what they do now. Human beings, the number of those dying increased. Number of those sick increased. So it's not just about lack of food, lack of medical facilities, lack of space to keep dead bodies, lack of even ground to swallow human beings. So where would we be buried? Is it in the air again? We don't know. Now, I, I helped her write that. And she was shot. She said, this you said is true. I said, it's the truth. I won't tell you what I've not gone to find out or make research about. Just about 10, 15 years ago, I was in Lagos. It's all a general hospital in Lagos. To go see one of my relatives who passed on. The son took me to the place. You know, they placed paper number on the body. And I saw the father's own on the floor. And I saw, God, why is this body on the floor where we move? So there's no space again in those rules where they keep them. And I said, find space. I said, well, God, where will I find space? <laughs> Look, you can't carry on a body, come up for this place. Go bury him. <laughs> Do you understand that? This is it. Stiffed laughter. We cannot laugh again. Our laughter is stiffed. Our laughter is held. Because of modern slavery. The last time you had the election that was to be held last year. You know, they went somewhere to go and campaign. 
Where is the place? Yes. UK. It was in London. P2B went to London. Bart went to London. Atiku went to London. The same place to go and campaign. Campaign to who? That is a question. All right. Um, we'll be rounding off the explanation on this poem. I will still continue. By the time we go for the break and come back, we're going to write notes on this. I hope next class we'll see how we can bring in two poems in a day. Because if we keep going the way we are going this way, we may not cover out of the syllabus. Is that true? Yeah. But then it will mean I have to rush you, and I don't like to rush because I need to explain very well to you. So it may also mean that we need to have another day, which will be decided by your authority. Because we still have um, some poetry to explain on African poetry. We've not even touched non-African poetry. We've not touched African prose non-african prose african drama non-african drama okay we need to go through all those things too and then the literary terms i think we are true with it except we're going to have i hope if everything works out the way i plan your first test will be on uh, literary terms and figures of speech i'm going to test you on it we're going to get the paper type you're going to answer questions on it at least 50 questions on figures of speech, literary terms, and genres of literature. But we're talking about this poem, The Green Land of Africa. It's into two places. Number one, the first part of The Green Land of Africa is talking about the slavery of the African people. And that slavery is into two, the ancient slavery and the modern slavery. Towards the end, Usually, you can't be a slave and be happy. That is why the title, The Grieved Land. Grieved means serious sorrows. So which means the first paragraphs or stanzas, we're talking about sorrows experienced by the African people. The pain, the grief. Then towards the last stanza, it's talking about the optimism. That yes, we're going through sorrows, but... We still have a kind of hope in our pain. We refuse to die. We are like a continent that has been trying to kill, but we refuse to die. Our being alive must be for a purpose. We are, we are, we are pained. We are in sorrow. Things are going bad. They are treating us as if we are not humans, but we are still alive. We are still alive. We are not dead. So which means we have some optimism. The first few paragraphs or stanzas are thinking about Pessimism. Pessimism means loss of hope, despair. Then the last one's talking about optimism. This may still be better. There's a saying, a living dog is better than a dead lion. When there is life, there is hope. Africans, we are alive, though we are not happy. Yes, we are alive, though we are like sleeves. But out of that pain, we still try to laugh. That's why it's called stiffed laughter. If you look at the African experience, when they were taking them as slaves, like I said earlier, they threw some of them in the Atlantic Ocean. You will see that part in the poem. Okay? Threw some of them in the Atlantic Ocean to go and die. With all those sufferings, they said, okay, we don't want to kill Africans again. We don't want to make them slaves again. I asked them that question. Have they stopped making us slaves? No. We are still slaves. There is nothing, I repeat, there is nothing Nigeria wants to do today that will not receive the approval of UK, United Kingdom. There is nothing. Even when you want to have your presidents, your presidents will go there and carry out debates. Last year, P2B was there. Uh, Tinubu was there. Atiku was there. Tinubu couldn't spend enough time to address you, but he spent enough time to go to London to address People were in London. I don't know if you were in London. I was not in London. I was in Nigeria. But I don't know what he was doing there. But definitely. Probably went to express his intentions and what he plans to do to favor UK if he's made the president. Stupidity on all side. 
Exactly. And did you make him the president? No. Yeah. Who have you ever made a president in this country? Tell me one. <laughs> you didn't make good no. luck. The person that made good luck was Oba Sanja. How many of you remember that story? Yeradua was made a president through the rigging by Oba Sanjo, and Oba Sanjo had to obey the powers that be. Those people I'm talking about. They made Yeradua. Yeradua came in as a president and he said, I know that the way I came in as a president is illegal. It's wrong. It's not supposed to be. But I will do my best to put a smile on your face. Your faces. And he did his best. See, today, he is the best president Nigeria ever had. Yeradua was a president that came in and the price of fuel reduced. Obasanjo made it 17 naira. He made it 65 naira. When they increased the price, when they increased the price of rice, he came in and reduced the price. When they were killing people in Niger Delta, militants were killing people. He went and talked and said, Let us resolve the issue. Is it about your oil? Okay, don't worry, we'll give you this percentage. This is from the side. People can think of your people about it. And they stopped killing. And he did all this within two years before he fell sick and died. Then Jonathan had to come in as his vice through the help of Obasanjo. He tried following the path of his boss. But even at that, it was not as good as Yeradua. But many will still wish him than the former president. I didn't mention his name. Oh. The former president came in and made the women believe that when men are talking, you don't talk. Your position is Ziaza room. Is that not true? It says Ziaza room. And that was why when the wife was to talk, they were to deal with the wife, the wife ran away. You know, for some years, the wife was not in Nigeria. How many of you are aware of this? I won't mention his name. The wife of the former president. She ran away from here and went to Dubai to go and stay in Dubai. Because they were planning to kill with him, to kill him. Uh, to kill her, rather. And from there, we now had our present person called Bax. The best president to many people. Yes. Right? Yes. And things are going on well. And we thank God for him. <laughs> we thank God for him. What am I doing? Steeped laughter. Are we communicating? So, please, you need to understand the fact that the poem is into two. The first part is optimism. The, I mean, the first part is pessimism. We're not sure what we are going to. We don't know what is happening to us. Africa is dying. Africa is losing its value. Then the other part is talking about, well, we'll still try and smile. We'll still try and believe that things can be better, which is our song in Africa, isn't it? It go better. Let's just pray. It will be well. It will be better. In Europe, this language is an abomination. In the US, in Britain, they don't speak like this. They don't say it. What is going to, who is going to make it better? They ask who is going to make it better. We are the one. Let's do it now. That way they do it in the US. They don't speak this same language they are speaking this way. And who brought in all this style of ego better? Let's leave it. Let's solve it. Those people. They brought it so that you can be easily influenced. Nigeria is one country that is scared to go and protest over anything. Ah, what do we go do? If we go, they go kill us now. What do man go do? I say, come now, I saw God one time. And you also realize that the reason answers came up was achieved. Where is us? Somebody must sacrifice one truth or the other to bring a change. In literature, we do it. You ready to go with me, right? In literature, we do it. Bad governance should not be encouraged. This is my land. This is my father's land. If this was happening in another land where it doesn't belong to me, I would have known what to say. It would be my country, not your country. But for God's sake, in my land, if anything happens, where would I go to? <laughs> your village is in this country. Your village is in this country. My village is in this country. And believe you me, they can fetch you out from that village if they want to deal with you. They will still deal with you there. So, but we must keep talking. We must keep reacting. Those of you who are content providers and content creators, I encourage you, 
do more of that communicate that talk to nigerians talk to nigeria be objective don't just go after money people go after money to become rich don't end up becoming rich but those who go after solution to human's problem end up becoming rich because if what i'm after is to give a solution to your problem i'll become wealthy without knowing but when i'm thinking that i want to make money from this thing that money will not come as expected so let's move our mind for the fact that you're going to make money from it but look at how can nigeria be do you know that this country has been so much humiliated i'm discussing all this because it's part of this slavery more than slavery that's what i'm discussing don't say i'm deviating in 2015 exchange rate between cameroon and nigeria i travel to cameroon so it's an experience i gave 250 naira to collect 1,000 francs, cephas. 500 naira to collect 2,000 cephas. But do you know how much it is now today? Today, if I give 1,000 naira, they will give me 500 cephas. <laughs> 2015, if I give 1,000 cephas, I mean 1,000 naira, in 2015, if I give them 1,000 naira, they will give me 4,000 cephas. But now, if I give them that same 1,000 naira, they will give me 500 cephas. The worst currency they were talking about in the whole world, I think they call it Gambian currency, one of African countries. They said that that time, if you mention the issue of um, 1 million, that you will use Ghana must go to carry the whole money. You know, we are laughing at that country. Nigeria is getting close to that currency. It's not Ghana. Ghana's currency is richer than Nigeria now. You can't compare Nigerian currency with Ghana. Ghana is far better now. Ordinary Cameroon is far better. You're talking about Ghana. Just yesterday, it was announced that the exchange rate for a dollar is 1,800 naira. 1,800 naira to one dollar. Do you know in Nigeria in 1980, Nigerian's currency was more valued than dollar. You will give about um, less than one naira, about 90 kobo, to get one dollar. In 1980, 90 kobo to get one dollar. Today, we will give 1,800 naira and they will give you one dollar. What is what? It's the lack of the economical prowess of the country. Number one problem is because most of the things we spend is in dollar. We buy things in dollar. We buy foreign things. We don't produce anything to sell to them. As soon as we produce something and we have to sell to those who have dollar, the dollar, the value of dollar will go down. Our own naira will make sense. But most of the time we use our own naira to buy things from those dollar countries. So dollar goes high, our own goes down. If today we are producing rice, we are producing Gary, producing things by ourselves, and we sell to them, the dollar price will come down. But we don't even produce toothpick. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. We don't produce, we import toothpick. Are you aware? Yeah. And it sounds crazy. We import toothpick, stick that you go to the forest and try to... I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, we just hope things become better. And you should be one of the contributors to make it become better. Let's read the last two stanzas and see if we go for a break. The great lands of Africa in the harmonious sounds of consciences contained in the honest blood of men and a strong desire of men in the sincerity. In a pure and simple rightness of the stars, existence. Africa just become like star. Hopeful, we look up, expecting if there will be a change one time or the other. They live, the green lands of Africa, because we are living and are imperishable particles of the greed lands of Africa. So what they are saying now is that in spite of all these things, we are still imperishable. In spite of all these things, we can't be destroyed. We are still there. We are still alive. And we are alive, you know? And that's the recent song they are singing now. Ah, well, any, any, then do one, we will still live. We don't go die. 
you know what we've been saying these days and that's what is happening but are we supposed to be in our world just to live you know you are useless when you don't affect your generation yes if you were created and all you did was grow up find the food you eat in your belly sit down sleep again continue struggle struggle take care of your children sleep again you are not useful to the creator that's not why you were created to fill the sand you were created to make impacts affect lives introduce something that will change your generation that will change your world your purpose is not just for you to be born and say okay uh, tomorrow morning i'll wake up sleep you sleep and wake up the next morning you go to your lesson come back wake up you're not thinking out of the box and that's one of my pains today we have few literary geniuses now in nigeria we need people to come up we need people to do what to come up you may say what about me me i'm doing my own in my own corner yes i am i am on facebook those who follow me follow me in a classroom like this i do mine too i know one thing for sure if everybody forgets me here, half of this class will not forget me. Yes. I am sure of that. I'm not asking you because I've been doing this for more than 20, almost 25 years now. And many of the students would always see me after 25 years to tell me that, sir, I know you, I remember you. They are top guys. I said, when, where? So you're even still speaking the way you speak those days, you know, and all that. So, and they remind me of the things I said. Why? Because we don't just want to teach we want to impact this thing into you those of you who are going to music think about these parts create ideas stop singing about woman and woman sex and love stop thinking, talking about this rubbish let people see the importance of being good a good name is better than gold and silver when his father was a president there was scholarship for all the students in Nigeria, even my own child enjoyed it. In fact, those days, we paid less amounts of money to travel to other states. That's a good name. Have you heard about a president called Buhari? Ah, that man really killed us that period. <laughs> hey, that man, it doesn't make a good name. So how do we pass a message to prove to the world that a good name is better than gold and silver? How do we people understand that there is no good thing in being wicked? How will the normal person find pleasure that his partner is falling and failing? You know we have it in Nigeria these, these days. That okay, you went to drive and your car developed faults. You couldn't drive again. You're looking for a mechanic to repair it. And your neighbor is happy over that situation. We have them. They are available and i ask myself how does that improve your own life and why is it difficult for you to see that somebody bought a new car a brand new car ha ah, i've not seen this car before it's a new car I say yes congratulations we are washing this car in fact i will be the one that will provide the drinks you're not the owner of the car you went to use your own money to buy drinks and you open for people let's celebrate this car why don't we reason like that? Instead, in by car, ha, oh yeah, wash up. Go buy more food, make a chop. Go and buy. That is not how love is expressed. That's what we call parasitism. You want to be a parasite on the man. Yes, he bought a new house. He opened the house. What are you giving to prove you are happy with him? Not what will he give again in addition to what he has done. If he decides to give you, collect, but you do something too. That's why I respect the Yorubas. I was born and bred in Lagos, and I saw the culture, and I love it so much. An average Yoruba person, if you are his friend and you want to wed, on your wedding day, he will ask you, what can I do to make the wedding a success? Those of us who are neighbors who will come early on that wedding, who will sweep, who will go to the market for you. Now, the food you are going to cook, the person has raised the money, but we as friends will bring in our own cooler. Yeah. We'll contribute our own money and coolers of food. Apart from, we're not depending on what the celebrant is celebrating. We are bringing our own drinks. And then anybody that comes around, take. Any, you're on the street, we'll go to call you from the studio. Come. Wedding is going on there. We'll give you. 
in Lagos. That's why you hear, you hear most of you say about like party. They like party because they know how to handle party. They do it well. They express a love out of it. But today, today, last two weeks, a wedding was going on somewhere in Abuja. And at the reception, the celebrants, those who were uh, in the ceremony celebrating the wedding, couldn't afford rice. You know, rice has increased now. They had to go and buy moi moi. They made moi moi half half. How did you know? You called the moi moi before I called it. They got moi moi and got water and gave them. And the guests who came became angry. What is moi moi and water? They dropped that and left and started going. And I said, What kind of rubbish is that? If you know moi moi was not okay for you, we'll bring your own money and prepare rice now to assist the person that brought moi moi. Why are you angry and you left the reception like that? Are we communicating? Maybe I'm not reasoning well. Is something wrong with my reasoning? No. People are looking at me as why is this man reasoning this way? I'm sorry, that's where I say things. So what are we insinuating here? When it comes to changing things in our environment, let's change our reasoning. Let's change. Africa is known for this. And the whites know we are known for this. And they were envious of this. In Europe, when you go there, they don't assist you. You don't go and visit a person and expect a person with this food and give to you. It's not automatic. And you are living in your house in the UK and I come to visit you. Ah, oh, well, you're fine. And I will sit down waiting that you come and dish food for me. No, it's not automatic. The highest you can do for me is you switch on the TV. I'm watching. When I'm tired, I request for water. I go back to my house. They don't have that lifestyle. We have the lifestyle. And we should be proud of it. Are we communicating? Let's change things. Let's turn things around. The sorrows in Africa, as a result of the ancient and modern slavery, has to come to an end. Somebody has to end it. I know the funniest thing. They keep making us know and believe that we are slaves. I told you of recent, the former president of the U.S. called us a name and said Nigeria is um, a shithole. You know what they call shithole? I will explain shithole for you. How many of you have used Sharanga before? You are, oh, people were not born then. Those days when we were born, we used Sharanga. Sharanga means pit toilet. Pit toilet. You make a hole. Yeah, you sit down there. And what comes out, the escritor drops, boom. Do you understand? So when they say shit hole, it means this is that place where people will come and boom. If you are in America and you want to pass your rubbish, just come here and release your rubbish. If you are in US, um, UK, you want to pass your rubbish, come to Africa and pass your rubbish. This is where you can release all the dirty and bad things because it's a land for sheets. It's a sheet hole. The former prime minister of UK said Nigeria is bastardly corrupt. Not just corrupt. Bastardly corrupt. But the careful research by me, and I can prove if they call me, reveals that UK is worse than Nigerian corruption. Yes, UK is worse than Nigeria in corruption. Are you aware that UK is one country that would open the opportunity for blacks to come to their country? When they come to their country, they will pay you in pounds, make you believe that the money is big. Hey, one pound changes back, back. Okay. They will use tax collected back from you. At the end of the day, you are working, sweating, but you don't see what you are working for. If you want to go back to your country after 10 years, you don't you cannot even be proud of 2000 pounds. Though each month they will pay you 500 pounds, 200 pounds each month. But where's your 2000 pounds? You don't know where it is. You can't defend it. Why? Where you park your car, you will pay. The water you are drinking, you will pay. The one you used to wash, you will pay. You are going to an amusement park and you park a car somewhere, you will pay. In front of your house, you are parking car, you will pay. Yes, in UK, in UK, you pay. It's in front of you. You will pay there. So, 
they will tax you and drain you with taxation and when it's collecting the tax the same government will give you for all your struggle and efforts will take kids from it and they are not corrupt you are the one corrupt when in your own place you can go anywhere and throw your sachet look at look at this thing you have just done here you can't do it in uk you go to a classroom and you just drop something like that on the floor on the street do it they catch you you pay for it especially if you're a black you will pay for it but well, here we can go anywhere we can drop anything anyhow you can even park your car in front of your neighbor's house and when he shout you shout at him back you know what they mean here so what's wrong you should even be happy i parked my car here do you have the kind of car we misbehave here in our country but then we feel it is the worst country let's go and stay there don't worry your relatives who are there after one year tell them call them in the night tell me the truth don't hide them. i will sweep while enjoying very well there hear from them those of you who have already asked please raise your hand you have already asked them did they tell you something different from what i said that they are enjoying that place things are fine there you you're always in the opposite i'm uh, not surprised you're always in the opposite elijah i'm asking those who are here someone said they are not enjoying like that too they are enjoying you called one i have credits right now if you have the number we'll call up only here now <laughs> if they are enjoying i pray you'll be in their situation too say amen okay good please what we are insinuating is that join in transforming nigeria to be a better place africa a good continent so that we don't suffer from this slavery modern day slavery being engineered by the europeans indirectly letting you to know about it the greatest things that will give us wealth in nigeria today are stolen by the whites yes i've told you before have you heard about californium yes californium in benue californium a gram of californium is sold for about one million dollars browse it you will see it there is on your phone californium is in benue around chibok is it been, wow. sorry bono bono around chibok area where they tell you that you have um um, you have, um, what do you call it? Boko Haram there. There's no Boko Haram there. There's no Boko Haram. The whites will come with their flights, land in that place in the forest, and be digging out this Californium. They will tell you there's Boko Haram, so you don't go near the area. You don't see what they're doing there. In the same night, they'll take their flights out of that place. And a gram of what they're digging is for $1 million. I didn't say a kilogram. I say a gram. So which means if you have a bag of rice of that particular amount of californium it can feed the whole nigeria in the 10 years we're not hungry <laughs> me you know the reason why i can't go there because it's an agreement between them and the government of nigeria <laughs> to take our resources yes ah. they are getting their own share they don't care what you go through the whites who know the worth of that gram we tell them and say for every gram we pick we are going to give you hundred dollars who will take the many amount of money so but well, that's too small make it 150 dollars okay 150 dollars and then they are taking about bags of it and that amount of money millions and trillions is entering your government's hand and they are not using it to help us at all in taraba they have gold in zamfara gold enough Am I exaggerating that one again? Those of you who are there, gold enough that can feed the whole country. It's there. In my states, we have oil. Of course, people are wearing oil already. They have been stealing it and using it. We have the natural, yeah, they've been stealing it. We have the natural resources in that same place, such as water. The highest number of pythons in Nigeria are seen around uh, Cross River states. That part. That have been given out now for oil. What's that place again? That Obasanjo gave out to Cameroon. What's the first name again? Bakasi. Bakasi. Bakasi is around Cross River State. Now, that area, according to, I'm quoting this person now, I'm quoting Mustafa, uh, Mustafa the former uh, 
a to uh, the late Abacha. Now explains that when they got there, most of the Nigerian armies were killed that, that by pythons than Cameroonian soldiers. And the pythons there, they are so much. And you know the cost of one python. So if you plan to go and get python from there, and according to him, he said if you get there, the water in that area is sparkling clean. There is no other place in Nigeria. You will see water as clean as that. The resources, I'm quoting Al Mustafa. I just gave you my source now. Browse it and find out. According to him, Nigeria is wealthier than many countries in Africa. How many of you have been to the East before? East has a kind of sand that is looking somehow reddish in Igbo land. We are told that that sand is used to make gold. That sand surface is used to make gold. Ask Al Mustafa. Al Mustafa is one person that has been with the presidents for a long time and has Nigerian secrets in his hand. Nigeria is the wealthiest country, but the poorest country in the world. Why? Because we are not using our resources well. My local governments in my states, if they are sincere, should be one of the biggest local governments in Nigeria. That local government has enough food. Has enough food, but the government refused to help and discourage people from entering that local government very well because Britons are in the forest there, taking our animals and resources out of Nigeria. They call that local government Boki local government. What was it about it before? In Cross River states. They produce palm oil, they have fruits, they have gary, they have plantain, they have banana, and much of this is from that place. Boki, a local government, is as big as FCT, as a local government itself. I told you that's where I went to, and I passed my grandmother's village, and we're just told that elephants just finished demolishing the houses there. Elephants move around that area, demolish huts there. Natural vegetation. You see, animals are there. Then the white will come in the forest. What they are doing there, we don't know. But the youth there told us that they noticed that planes will come in the night, carry some things, and move out of the place, the forest. And they've been doing this for more than 20 years. And they've tried demonstrating, but the government of Cross River will calm them down. Don't worry, we'll do something, we'll do something. That means he's aware of what is going on. Are we communicating? Africa is rich. Africa is actually suffering from grief. This is the pain. This is a grief the country is going through. What is it about our time now? Are you don't you didn't even give me a sign? Please. Let's go for a break and we come back at what time? Is it eleven thirty? We have fifteen minutes, right? Fifteen minutes to that seventeen gives us what? Eleven thirty-four? No, you didn't calculate well. It should be eleven thirty-two. But then let's come at eleven thirty-four. 11.34 is our time, please. If you come here beyond 11.35, you will not be allowed into this class. Enjoy your break.